good day my dear postgraduate students welcome to a class on the practical exercises connective tissue states i hope you people can appreciate the colors on the screen as well as diagnose what is in my background otherwise i will be looking like a modern swami ji with a design behind us back the class for the day is connective tissue states before we go into the details of it let us know what are the elements of the connective tissue there are basically three elements one will be the fiber two the cells and three the ground substance or matrix in this one for example i am able to see delicate spindle shaped cells which are nothing but the fibroblast also there are some broad ribbon like pale structures which are never ending if you look very carefully there will again be a supporting material for this source so that is the ground substance or the matrix so we had seen the fibroblast the collagen fibers and the ground substance or matrix let us forget the other elements it is always better that we know the basics the components which we are going to study the fibroblast produces collagen in a way it can be a precursor of a collagen it also secretes the ground substance and it yields a mesenchymal origin to elastin so this is another substance we shall be dealing with it. coming again to the list of the connective tissues these are mandatory to be remembered collagen reticulin elastin basement membrane muscle oxytalon fibers which are the tendons neuroglia specialized and muscle also a form of a specialized connective tissue so these things we should have in mind so there will be an epithelium a connective tissue and then the bone and others there are different types of collagen this by itself is a question for us i am not going to go into the details of it in the present class we shall be sticking to the practicals there are five types of collagen fibers as given by kali look at this before i go into this one i find that there are wavy pale structures and they are composed of multiple fibers and in turn they form bundles the bundle might branch but the individual fibrils do not branch the fibril is about 0.4 microns in diameter and there is something called as microfibrils which are 40 nanomicrons maybe 1 by 100th of this size there are the different fibers type 1 is large type 2 occurs in the hyaline cartilage and the cornea type 3 is associated with glycoproteins type 4 incidentally forms the basement membrane never have we thought that basement membrane is also a form of collagen particularly in the kidney it is of great importance and type 5 occurs in the placenta and lesions such as atherosclerosis as i had mentioned earlier the collagen bundles branch but fibrils do not what i am seeing here is the delicate fibroblast and the bundles of wavy collagen which are pale and in some areas i am able to see a ground substance here there is a gap these can be artifactual contractions 
This is another friend, the elastin. Beautiful, slender, wavy, parallel or branching. They occur normally in the blood vessels and in the dermis. These two elements we shall be remembering. When I go to the stain, you should be recollecting. Glycoprotein is equal to microfibrils plus amorphous protein. The elastin by itself has got a rubbery consistency. That is why it can recoil. That is the property of the elastin. Under hetany stains, they are all eosinophilic and refractile. Beyond that, we will not be able to see them. But here, they have been almost each fibril has been individually brought out beautifully. My first stain will be the Van Giesen stain. And with very great difficulty, thanks to Wikipedia, this picture of Van Giesen was retrieved. This slide is of great interest or rather inquisite to me. Ira Thompson Van Giesen from 1866 to 1930 was from the Long Island of US. He graduated from the Columbia College of Physicians and was a teacher at the College of Physicians. He was an instructor both in pathology and in histology, particularly with reference to the nervous system. And in 1986, he took over as the director of New York State Hospital for the insane. And probably it is because of this acquaintance that he developed the Van Giesen stain for the neural tissue. Imagine a person who is a director of a hospital developing a Van Giesen stain. That was one. And he is associated with various conditions such as hypnosis. He coined the word psychomotor epilepsy. And he by himself was a very complex person, which has been described. He knew none of the complex rules of the common man. This was the observation of William Allenson White. So, a very complex person who has given a tremendous contribution to histopathology. This picture is from the research case. And this is not uncommon to any of us. Sometimes we get what is called as a myomectomy. A tumor is removed from the abdomen. It can be a routine. But then, this is also a tumor that has been sent. It is not uncommon that we get it from an adnexia of the FGT. Or, in this case, it was removed from the ventricle of a patient. Now, how do you make a differentiation and confirm your diagnosis? Now, dear students, what are we seeing on the screen? On my left, I am finding a tumor, which is composed of closely packed bundles of spindle-shaped cells. They have got elongated slender nuclei. That much is sufficient for the description. On my right, again I am finding a tumor with similar morphology. So they are closely packed spindle-shaped cells. Whereas B denotes sparse amount of these spindle-shaped cells and there is extensive amount of hyaline-like matrix. So what is the Diagnosis. Sometimes, not uncommonly, we get a lesion from the abdomen rather than the uterus. It is possible and probable that there can be a fibroid over there. But then, a desmoid tumor is equally, if not more common. How do you distinguish that in such cases? Desmoid is more of fibrous tissue. Leomyoma is of smooth muscle. So, when I do a special stain, this is a meson strichrome that you people are seeing. The muscle takes up a red color and the connective tissue. 
So this confirms a diagnosis of leomyoma because I'm able to see the smoothness. This again is another one. I don't think we will very easily call it a leomyoma. This is a solid tumor, quite difficult to cut. It can be having a cricket ball like consistency. And I am finding crisscross bundles of the white fibrous tissue. So is it a leomyoma or is it a fibroma or still worse? Is it a fibrosarcoma or a desmoid tube? So look at the differential diagnosis. It might be very simple, but then in pathology, we have to give only one diagnosis. And look at this picture over here. I'm finding bundles of spindle-shaped cells. And in some areas, a vague story form and a herringbone pattern is also seen. So how do I come to a diagnosis? Look at this again. You find that a special stain has been done. And here, the muscle takes up a red color and the connective tissue takes up a blue color. The meson like this. So probably this is again a leomyoma with a lot of this hyaline change. It is a different picture whatsoever, but I am telling you the importance of the diagnosis. The Van Giesen method. In pathology, you will be given a HE stain. Two, there can be a PAP stain. Third one will be one of the special stains for the different students, and one will be this. So, a definite special stain for each and every student is going to be there. The procedure is given here. You can recollect it, or you can go to the text and you can. Memorize it. Taking the sections to water, staining the nuclei with celestine blue, rinsing in distilled water, staining in hematoxyl. Wash well in running water and then it is flooded with Curtis stain for five minutes. Blotted and rapidly dehydrated mounted. The steps are very simple. The nuclei take up a blue color. That is because I am using a hematoxyl. The so collagen is bright red and the muscle takes up a yellow color. So in a leomyoma for confirmation, the muscle will be taking up a yellow color, whereas the rest of the collagen will be bright red in color. If you look at the lesion behind my back, you can guess what it is. So this is what is being done. So in a case of a meson strike room, I am able to see the red color smooth muscle and the blue color connective tissue. Whereas in a Van Giesen, the connective tissue, it takes up a red color. And if you observe carefully, there is a golden tinge that is there in these regions. So it is a case of a leomyoma and the dark pink or red color is the connective tissue. See how a simple special stain has helped us those days. Nowadays, we talk about the various markers and so on. What is readily at hand, we should be able to do. And this is not very simple. Sometimes you will find that there is a miss of the color. So a practice is always mandatory for you people before the exam. So this is a special stain kit. And then what he says is, Van Giesen is used to differentiate between the collagen and the smooth muscle in tumors and to demonstrate the increase in the collagen in certain diseases. So there can be a combination of the picric acid and the acid fuchsin. The small molecules of the picric acid penetrate all the tissues rapidly. This is supposed to be the principle of it. But again, all are not firmly retained and you find that in the red blood cells and muscle, there is a different color that is being taken. The larger molecules of the Panacea S displaces the picric acid molecules from the collagen fibers, which have got larger pores. Therefore, they allow these molecules to enter. That is why you find collagen takes up a different color and the muscle takes up a different color. This one 
we shall find that. What is the principle for each and every exercise? You will be asked. What are the causes for error? You will be asked. Now, where of Van Giesen stay is a close cousin of the Van Giesen. And in this particular case, the Veroff and Giesen. Veroff stain is used to demonstrate the elastic fibers. But in this section of the skin, there is hardly any elastic fiber. There is a marked loss of the elastic tissue. And these are the collagen bundles which are red in color. Sometimes you find there can be a keloid or some other tissue which can be demonstrated. However, the positive point is there is a loss of elastic tissue. So, these are the formulae for the Van Giesen stain. I would like you people to kindly buy heart. The values are not very important. But then, the Celestine Blue, Curtis stain and Panacea. These you will have to, and this is the reference for this. One. The staining procedure, it is again repeated. It is given in any of the standard texts. When you people are asked in the exam, do not mention a note or other things. You should be able to quote Culling, Bancroft, Lynch, etc. So, for connective tissue stains, this is a ready reckoner picked up from the net. Meson strike wound. The muscle takes up a red color, collagen blue, reticulin blue, elastin takes up a red color. Van Giesen, muscle yellow. Connective tissue red. These two are not significant. PTH, the muscle takes up a blue color. All the others are orange. In h &E stain, that is the main problem with h &E. It's a beautiful stain, but you have got only two colors. A pink color and a blue color. All are pink. And the nucleus alone takes up a blue color. That is where the special stains come into action. Look at this one. This is a Wiegert hematoxylin. Hematoxylin always is a nuclear stain. It can be black in color, brown or brownish black. This is a Wiegert hematoxylin. The first step in any of the special stains will be to do the nuclear stain. So this is Wiegert and I am bothered only about the nuclei. Well, they have been well taken up. I will be proceeding with the stain. The next one will be the Veroff Van Giesen. If Van Giesen is a good stain, why should we do a Veroff Van Giesen, BVG? So, this is incidentally a case of a aortic dissection, iatrogenic. Probably they have caused some kind of a cut and then there is a deviation. Look at this one. This is the intima that is getting peeled off and somewhere in the media or in between, there is a seepage of the blood. A clear case of dissection, which we might see in a case of Marfan syndrome or otherwise. This is a reference of this particular article. And when a special stain such as a Veroff Van Giesen is done, I find that. So these are the elastic fibers, and this will be the probably the adventitia, etc. But here, in between the elastic fibers, I am able to find the blood seeping in. So, this is a case of a dissecting aneurysm, iatrogenic blood cells. And look at this again. As I told you, the hematoxyl, the first one, it stains the nuclei. These are also the nuclei which are being stained. But then, the connective tissue, it takes up a different color. In a case of Van Giesen, there are only two colors. Whereas here, in Veroff's Van Giesen, the nuclei as well as the elastic tissue are stained blue black. So here also I am able to find out the elastic tissue. That is the advantage of the elastic stain or the Veroff's Van Giesen stain. Look at the elastic fiber being stained. A beautiful picture as such. So this is a kit and these are the components over here. Hematoxylin, ferric chloride, iodine, sodium thiosulfate, counter stain. Counter strain is the last step in any of the staining. So eosin, for example, it is a counter strain. Alcyon blue, alcyon green, they are all counter stains. So in this case, there is an atrophy of the elastic tissue in a case of emphysema. 
So this has been demonstrated. So there are the elastic fibers, but some kind of a weakness can be seen in this. There can be the loss of the tissue in atherosclerosis also. That will be the importance of this. Beautiful picture showing the wavy elastic fibers parallelly arranged. Normal elastic stain. The Verhoff's Van Giesen. Look at this one. Pseudoxanthoma elastic. So it is a condition of the skin wherein there is a loss of this elasticity. If an elderly person, you try to pull the skin, it takes some time to recoil. So in this case, I am not sure whether the elastic fibers are there or not. So when a VVG is being done, I am finding scattered and broken elastic fibers. Pseudoxanthoma elastica. Cutis laxa, midderma elastolysis. So this is the epidermis and this is the middermis. So in this again, there is a lack of the elastic tissue. With aging, you find that these are the elastic fibers, black fibers which are getting broken. So this is the normal connective tissue with the red color. The uses. You should be a little careful when mentioning the uses. This is the Verhoff's Van Giesen and this is the Van Giesen. Verhoff's Van Giesen, both of them are almost the same because they have got the Van Giesen form. So what you are seeing, I am finding the smooth muscle which takes up an yellow color. The elastic tissue is black in color. And if there is a connective tissue, there will be a red color. To it. So in this, there can be a reduplication of the elastic fibers which can be diagnosed. Particularly, it occurs in cases of aneurysm, etc. Breaking or splitting of the elastic fibers, as I had shown in the examples. Vasculitis is a good example. Connective tissue disorders. So, in this case, it is not the elastic, but then the connective tissue itself, which can be demonstrated as in morphons. Dissecting aneurysm, whether it is hydrogenic or morphons. Pseudoxanthoma elastica. To identify the normal elastic fibers. Vascular invasion by tumor, a superb one. And to differentiate between the smooth muscle and collagen. This will be the uses of the Verhoff's Van Giesen. And for Van Giesen, it will be simply to distinguish between the muscle and the collagen. Leomyoma and a fibroma. To diagnose a desmoid tumor and to identify increased amount of collagen. So, very carefully, you people will have to superimpose one over the other have an entire list of the uses so that you are at loss. Remember, your time is only five minutes for answering the special stain. So this is a commercial stain that has been taken from the net. Very beautifully, it has been depicted. So what are all the components? What is the time that you people give? And what is the process? For example, iron hematoxylin, it is a nuclear stain. Hydrochloric acid, 1% is used for differentiation. Distilled water for rinsing. And Van Giesen picrofusin is the dye that we are interested in. Finally, there can be a dehydration and then a mounting. So this is Elastica Van Giesen picrofusin staining. This is the procedure. And these are all the various inference that we draw from it. Nuclei, what is the color, connective tissue, elastic fibers, etc. And this is the reference for this. It's a beautiful one. I could not do anything with it. Hats off to them for this knowledge that they have provided. I'll stop wearing black when they make a darker color. Wednesday Adams. So probably black is beautiful. Thank you for your patience.